Welcome back to another episode of Stuff I Learned in the House of Bamboo. God damn, that's a good intro. I like to think this channel is about the bigger questions in life. So today I'm addressing one of the biggest. If you urinate on a monkey, it becomes aggressive. My God, he's become full of rage. But why? Let's talk about the amygdala. Humans are obsessed with aggression. When used in the right context, it can make you a hero. And in the wrong context, a villain. For this reason, scientists have been fixated by two almond-shaped nubs in the limbic system, the amygdala. So aggression comes from angry almonds? Yes. Grr. How do you know? Action potentials can be detected in every species of amygdala during bouts of aggression. Lesion them, aggression drops. Stimulate them, aggression rises. With this knowledge, could we engineer a more peaceful humanity? Yes, so they will respect my authority. In the 1960s, a girl called Julia S. would experience uncontrollable rage due to seizures. Electrodes were implanted into her amygdala. If they were stimulated, she'd become aggressive. After months of monitoring, an amygdalotomy was performed. Two years on, her rage attacks were gone. She lived at home and passed her high school exams despite continued psychosis. A moderate success. Then we have the case of Leonard Kill, a talented engineer. In 1966, Kill suspected his wife was having an affair. Well, hello there. And flew into fits of rage. Hey! She then convinced him to see a psychiatrist. This anger is super unhealthy, Lenny. And he ended up with Vernon Mark and Frank Irvin. They diagnosed him as epileptic and paranoid, describing him as dangerous. But Kill's wife was actually having an affair, which probably explains the paranoia. And the worst thing he did was throw a tin can at her which he missed. Poor old Leonard was pressured into getting four electrical strands full of electrodes stuffed into his head. Is this really necessary? Trust me, I have a briefcase. They ran tests and literally microwaved his amygdala till they were destroyed. Then his wife left him. Bye. Mark and Irvin claimed success. Our work here is done. Agreed. Fast forward to 1971 and Leonard is found in a hospital with a wastebasket on his head to stop the microwaves and is essentially a vegetable. When it was revealed that Mark and Irvin's experiments were part of the CIA's behavior control efforts, the public was outraged, and psychosurgery quickly lost funding. The amygdala received more media attention in 1966 due to Charles Whitman, the Texas Tower sniper. In 1965, Whitman went to a doctor complaining of severe headaches and violent impulses. A year later, this happened. From the observation room, 26 floors up, a killer terrified students and others on the campus of Texas University. He was Charles Whitman, 24, an ex-Marine, a dead shot. For an hour and a half, beginning just before noon, the sniper waged his private war against mankind. For 90 minutes, nothing could be done against him. A tumor on the brain drove him across the borderline of sanity to spread terror. Eventually, the crazed sniper was shot dead when the police managed to charge in upon his lair. In a suicide note, Whitman asked for a brain autopsy, fearing something was wrong. This revealed a tumor pressing against his amygdala. Could this malfunction have caused a mass shooting? And the drama doesn't stop there. The amygdala is also central to fear and anxiety. We don't like being afraid. In one study, subjects could wait to receive a shock or press a button to get a bigger shock immediately. To the testicles. Ow! Okay, it wasn't actually to the testicles, but still, 70% went for the immediate Zzz. shock, Ow. and in those that waited in fear, their amygdala went increasingly haywire. So how do you study anxiety? Tell a group of people to answer a question wrong deliberately. Guys, these lines are all the same length. Okay, okay but don't tell one person. Hey guys, what did I miss? Nothing, Lenny. Shut up. Often that person will follow the crowd. Okay guys. Are these lines the same size? Yes. yes. Lenny? Um... Yes? Lenny has conformed, and his amygdala remains silent. Now, if unlike Lenny, you actually have a spine and go against the group, what happens? Let's try that again. Are these lines the same size? Yes. yes. Um... No? Well, what do you know? Lenny's grown some balls and gone against the group. Unfortunately, he's also unsure of himself and his interpretation of the world, so his amygdala goes haywire. This creates a feeling of unease, or as we know it, anxiety. Right, that's pretty complicated. Let's get back to fear. 
There are two types of fear, innate and learned. Innate fear is built in. Rats fear the smell of cats, even if they've never encountered one. This is due to the ancient central amygdala. If a rat was naturally afraid of the smell of cats, it would be more likely to pass on its genes. And if it wasn't, well, it would be dinner. Next to the central amygdala is the basolateral amygdala. This receives sensory information, which it relays to the central amygdala. Its primary function is learning fear and stimulating a fear response. Neuroscientist Joseph Ledeau shed some light on this. If you shock a rat, it will freeze. Pain is an innate fear. But play a beep noise to a rat and nothing happens. If you play the beep, then shock the rat enough times, it will eventually learn to fear the beep, to the point that just hearing the beep will cause a stress response in the amygdala. The rat has been conditioned. The basolateral amygdala also plays an important role in a social context. Without it, you are naive, trusting, and vulnerable, like Pinocchio. With it, you are vigilant and can tell if you're being treated fairly. In an experiment by Professor Franz de Waal, two monkeys were treated unfairly. Steve gives a rock, and he gets a bit of cucumber as a reward. Hmm, delicious. Now Norman gives a rock. He receives a grape as a reward. What? And Steve sees this. Well, he got a grape. Now Steve gives the rock again. Okay, there's a bit of cucumber again, Steve. What? What is... He got a grape! Give... Give me a grape! Steve's not very happy about this. Hey! 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 Give... Grape! Yeah, I want a grape! Norman gives the rock. And gets a grape. He... He got another one! Steve now checks the rock to see if there's anything wrong with it and gives it to the researcher and gets another piece of cucumber. What the hell is that? G give me the damn grape woman! It, ah! So I think that answers our question. Not being treated fairly activated Steve's amygdala, causing him to become aggressive. If getting a cucumber instead of a grape sets this off, you can imagine he wouldn't be best pleased if someone peed on him. If you urinate on a monkey, it becomes aggressive because of the amygdala.